Hello gorgeous peeps, welcome to another banging episode of Techspert Weekly, the only weekly tech news show that makes less sense than watching a David Lynch film dubbed into Flemish after chowing down on a whole bag of drugs. Although actually, to be fair, maybe a bag of drugs is exactly what you need before you watch a David Lynch film, I'm not really sure. And here we are, just a fortnight away from the end of this wank splat of a year, and of course just one week away from good old Christmas Day with the added bonus that we've got the perfect excuse this year not to see the extended family. So that means no having to go around to the mother-in-laws on Christmas Day, so that means I don't have to pretend not to be a raging alcoholic, I don't have to wear smartish clothes, or indeed clothes of any description, I don't have to hold in my farts during dinner, I don't have to surreptitiously hock my mother-in-law's Brussels sprouts into my napkin when everyone's distracted by the youngest cousin throwing up all over the broccoli. Now, this year I'll basically be on my sofa munching a buttered turkey leg in my skinnies. But anyway, I digress, that festive fun is still like a week away, I've still got an ever-expanded pile of review kit to get through, there are still launches going on, it's a week to Christmas people, what is happening this year? So we better crack on. Techspert Weekly. So yeah, even though we're still just one week away from Christmas, that hasn't stopped the relentless tech launch machine. This week it was HMD Global's turn to launch a new smartphone. Seriously, guys, take a holiday. Just go get so f***ed up at your work Christmas party that you can't reliably function again until 2021 and then maybe I'll actually get a few days off. So their big launch this week was the Nokia 5.4, a moody wee bugger that comes in two distinctly cheery colours, polar night or dusk. This 6.4 inch budget delight sports similar specs to Motorola's Moto G9 Play and Power, including an HD Plus display and that same Snapdragon 662 chipset. So as I found on the likes of the Moto G9 Play and that Poco M3 as well, the everyday running should be alright, maybe the odd judder here and there, but you do get the Adreno 610 packed onto that chipset. And as usual, that GPU should easily be able to handle the likes of your Call of Duties and your PUBGs and all that good stuff where you get shot in the head from about 50 yards away by a 12 year old that you couldn't even see. Stop playing video games and do your bloody homework, you little twat. The 4000mAh battery isn't nearly as big as the 5000mAh effort crammed into the G9 Play or even the 6000mAh one stuffed into the G9 Power as well as that Poco M3 but you should still comfortably get well over a day of use thanks to the clean stock version of Android stuffed on there. And as usual, HMD is promising two years of OS updates and three years of security updates so at least you know your Nokia 5.4 is going to stay fresh for the foreseeable. And HMD made a big thing about the camera tech too with a 48 megapixel primary snapper that apparently completely eradicates shutter lag. And the Nokia 5.4 also has the same cinema mode as more premium handsets for shooting 21x9 footage at 24 frames per second. Plus of course there's a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, there's a basic depth sensor and Psi a 2 megapixel macro lens because of course there f***ing is. You've also got NFC support for your contactless payments in select regions. You've also got micro SD memory card support to expand the 64 or 128 gigs of onboard storage depending on which model you go for and yippee hooray a headphone jack too. And if all of those hot texts specs got you rather hot under the collar. The great news is you can snaffle your very own Nokia 5.4 right here in Blighty from today for 160 quid. But is that actually any good? Well, stay tuned for another video of me wibbling on about it in depth once I actually get my hands on one. Lots of other random tech stuff going on this week, but of course the other big news was uh, Google deciding that it just couldn't be f***ed with 2020 anymore, just like the rest of us then, and it basically just its pants and left users without access to all of the major online stuff like YouTube, Google Drive, Gmail, all that good stuff. The outage lasted for about an hour and then everything was fine and dandy again and at the time I shot this Google still hadn't explained what actually happened so therefore I'm just going to assume that it was the servers gaining sentience and testing the waters a bit for the upcoming 2021 machine uprising. And on that cheery note it's time regrettably for the part of the show that made me wish I had a spare noose kicking about in a drawer somewhere. It's viewer comments. Beep, 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 beep. Viewer comments. <laughs> right, so um, so last week I tried my level best to wipe out any lingering fan base that this channel might still have by basically talking about a stupid dream I had for three minutes at the start of the show. And not only that, but it was about Dale Winton, who was a celebrity that guaranteed pretty much no one outside of the UK would have even heard of. And apparently it turns out that one of my fellow northerners is actually an expert in dream analysis. Uh, so Soul Cancelling, thank you for your input, sir, says, as an expert in dream analysis, it's simple. Themes of dreams are about what's going on in your unconsciousness. Dill Winton represents your funny character, his death in the cemetery represent changes in your life. So basically the dream is telling you to stop chasing something that is gone, that'll probably be my hairline then, and stick with your funny and flamboyant character and stop worrying about it. You're welcome and up the borough. 
Yeah, fair play. You managed to make some sort of sense out of the uh, the ludicrous there, so top marks. Um, actually, for next week, mate, I did have another strange dream just the other day. I was basically sat there peeling lots and lots of bananas in quick succession very rapidly while Ariana Grande was doing a little dance in a swimsuit. And then when I woke up, my pyjamas were really sticky. Weird. Um, David has a completely different analysis of my dream. He says, your dream seems to indicate a deep desire for a thick, full head of hair and to perhaps present an episode of Supermarket Sweep. I mean, correct on both counts, to be perfectly fair. I mean, who wouldn't want to present an episode of Supermarket Sweep, right? The pun potential is just absolutely magnificent. Here comes Frank's spuds in hands, and meanwhile Doreen's distracted by the Spanish sausage, etc, etc. And also Fede Pedi, or Feed Peed 04, uh, not sure how to pronounce that, uh, also has an interesting spin on it. Uh, he basically thinks that the dream was a metaphor for my ongoing battle to cover every Motorola phone ever launched. Just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in with a dozen more goddamn smartphones. Uh, Dafford, a regular here at Textbook Weekly, said he actually met Dale once. They said, uh, Dale came once into my pub in Nottingham, the Admiral Duncan. Uh, Tuesday night it was, he tried to push forward to get served quickly, didn't work for me. And rightly so, Dafford, mate. You'd have to be like, oi, Dale, look, I respect your contribution to light-hearted daytime entertainment in the 1990s and your ability to warm the cockles of the nation with little more than a cheeky wink and a bit of PG-friendly banter. But seriously, we're British. No cutsies. Not even for our cherished celebrities. Even if the Queen came in here with four of her corgis, I'd be like, Oi, Queenie, sorry, no dogs allowed in the parlour. And next up, Baz Anime says, Dude, seriously, no cheese and vodka before bed. Do you think it was the cheese and the vodka? Maybe I'll just lay off the cheese, just to be on the safe side. Uh, and he also continues, By the way, 888 was the Teletext TV guide. Oh, God, yeah. Christ, back in the day, classic. Used to use that all the friggin' time when my uh, mum forgot to get was it the Radio Times magazine or whatever. And I would absolutely love that as well if Qualcomm actually named its new Snapdragon flagship chipset after the bloody TV guide on a bit of CFAX. And you know what, completely random tangent now, what I only just discovered about a week or two ago was that Teletext actually had an adults-only section which came on at about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night called After Hours. And apparently it was filled with like pervy quizzes and like naughty confessions and stuff, but it sounded very, very British, so it was probably all stuff like, oh, I was making love with me, Harold, the other night, and we actually turned the light on. Uh, next up, Matt from Across the Podcast with Sam and Matt on a Sunday evenings. Go check that out. Cracking pair of lads. Uh, he says, Uncle Spurt's epic Call of Duty death counter. I mean, yeah, my kill to death ratio isn't particularly great, got to say. And the problem is that, that I play all of these online multiplayer games like I used to play games like Doom back in the day, basically running around like my arse is on fire, spraying lead everywhere until someone pops a shotgun shell in my face. And that was fine back in the 1990s because that's how everyone played. You didn't have sniper rifles or anything like that. You just had mini guns and rocket launchers. And of course, kids these days, it's all f***ing tactics and teamwork. Little twats. Oh, and that also continues, Chris, you should also be wearing a bloody Christmas hat and a beard. Well, tune in next week uh, for the special Christmas episode of Textpert Weekly going out on Christmas Day, no less, and you might be pleasantly surprised. I'll probably have the Santa hat at the very least. The beard will probably be my own, to be fair. And it will be proper white by this time next week because it's really, really getting there now. Seriously, check this out. I've got some serious grey going on in here now. And about 50% of this is down to bloody Motorola. Uh, next up, RMCK says, Hi, is Apple given one year free subscriptions to their services like Apple TV Plus with a purchase of the Apple AirPods Max as they are with the iPhones? I ordered mine and they'll be delivered within 8 to 10 weeks here in the UK. 8 to 10 weeks? Bloody hell, they only make like 50 of them or something. Um, sadly, I don't think they are giving away free subscriptions to Apple TV with the AirPods Max despite the ludicrous cost, but frankly, they should be giving away uh, Apple TV for free because it's a bit cack. I did really, really like that Ted Lasso, whatever it was called, the American dude who comes over to manage a British team. That was really good. Everything else, absolutely dire. Uh, next up, Sish says, AirPods Max cost more than my phone. I'm pretty sad now. Don't be sad, mate. I'm pretty sure those things cost more than most people's phones. They cost more than my first f***ing car, for God's sakes. Uh, Kath says, where I live, those Apple AirPods Max would be pulled off people's heads. Yeah, and heaven help you if you actually carry them around in that little bra carry case thing. And obviously, I'm not saying that if you do those things, you deserve to get mugged. But frankly, it would be a little bit like strolling around Eternia with a t-shirt that reads, He-Man is a c It's probably not going to end well for you. Uh, next up, Mike M says, Don't worry, you still don't have hair. <laughs> oh, cheers, mate. I was getting kind of concerned there that it might have grown back inexplicably. But phew, no. Still bugger all up there. Uh, next up, I am Audien2 says, Chris, if you're ever in Melbourne, Australia, let's go for drinks. 
Oh, excuse me, moi. Um, yeah, that sounds like a plan. I've never actually been to Oz before, but I could definitely use a bit of winter sun just to prevent myself from turning completely transparent. And out of curiosity, what's the sort of the big beers of choice out in Oz uh, right now? Is the likes of the, the craft deals and all that sort of stuff sort of uh, protruded into there yet? Yeah, or just still a classic bit of the old lagers and all that quite refreshing on a sunny day, of course? Because I did actually go to New Zealand about 15 years ago um, for a couple of weeks and to be mildly polite, the beer there was kind of like drinking a can of parrot's piss. Uh, it got so bad that in one pub I actually paid the equivalent of about eight British pounds for a bottle of Newcastle Brown just so I could drink something that tasted vaguely like beer. Of course I'm sure they've sorted it out by now, that was a long time ago. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Uh, Richwall32 says, Hi, any chance of an update on the Jabra Elite 75T after the noise cancelling update? Yes, I still need to actually get back on that. I've still got the 75T so I will uh, provide an update for that and hopefully actually review the 85 T's at some point too. Uh, right, better make this the last one for the week because I've got, as I say, quite a bit to get through. Uh, so Patrick says, talking Motorola, you begin to wonder why they bothered bringing out the One series. Uh, certainly the guarantee of updates was reassuring considering how hit and miss they've been with the G series in the past and indeed with most of their smartphones. Uh, but where are the One series replacements? I'm guessing the concept has been quietly buried. Uh, yeah, I'm 100% with you on that one. It was really, really weird. It seemed like at one point there was like a new One series smartphone coming out like every other day pretty much. And they also did introduce like one new feature that the others didn't have. So there was like one that had a macro lens. There was one that did the action cam thing where you could run around with it uh, held like this and it would shoot horizontal footage uh, with stabilization. I mean, what they basically felt like was just experimental phones just testing out these new features before they chucked them into their real phones, as it were. But yeah, I'm not expecting to see another Moto 1 phone anytime soon, which let's face it, I'm not exactly 100% gutted about that. But anyway, huge thank you to everyone who commented uh, last week. Apologies if I didn't get around to your comments just time now for a quick look ahead uh, and what we've got here is oh on Monday it's the ZT Axon 25G global release and this is a notable smartphone because it's the first one to launch globally with an under display selfie cam so it's actually integrated under the display no notches or little sphincter pinhole cutout things so make sure you come back Monday morning I think it is UK time for a bit of hands-on sexiness with that bad boy I'll have some other bits going live during the week and then on Friday please do join me for the final Textbook weekly of 2020 we made it guys for hell. We have a special Christmas episode, so yeah, tuck into your mince pies, down your whiskies, and then yeah, watch some bald twats banging on at you as usual. If you've got any Christmas joy to spread, then definitely bung it down in the comments below. Please do have yourselves a lovely weekend and stay safe, and I'll see you next week. Cheers everyone, love you!